Hey, women of God, it's your girl, Kim Brooks. Welcome to another edition of Kicking It with Kim Brooks. And today, we're going to kick it about three types of Christian men in dating. Three types of Christian men in dating. And when I say Christian men, I'm speaking of someone who has, according to Romans 10, 8 through 10, believed in their heart, confessed with their mouth that Jesus is Lord. We know that once that's done, you are a Christian. So that's why I'm speaking of three types of Christian men. Now I'm speaking of in dating as it pertains to what their stance is in a dating relationship as it pertains to being celibate until marriage, where their stance is. So there are three types of Christian men in dating. Now, the first type is the type that they believe in their heart Jesus is Lord and they've confessed with their mouth Jesus is Lord but that's the extent of their salvation profession their salvation walk everything after that in their life their life does not reflect that of a Christian their lifestyle shall I say does not reflect that of a Christian you would know that person or that man was a Christian by looking at his lifestyle. You you wouldn't even know w what religion he was, if he was any religion, because his lifestyle doesn't match up with his profession. Um, he'll say he's a Christian, but yet he's out here sexing, hooking up with folk, um, acting like the world. So it's between him and God as far as his uh, relationship with God. He would definitely have to work that out himself. But as far as the type of Christian man, that's someone whose lifestyle does not match up to his Christianity profession. The second type of Christian man in dating is someone who they are a Christian man. They desire to live according to God's standard, which is celibacy until marriage. They desire to be the man of God. God predestined them to become. Them to become. They may go to church regularly. Sometimes they pray. They may read the word. They may try to live according to the word, but they may slip here and there. It's not like they're setting out to just be out here promiscuous, sleeping around. It's just they feel they have needs and they're at a constant battle with the flesh and with the spirit. Whereas one minute they want to live right, but then the flesh is weak and they give into temptation over and over and over again. Yet their heart wants to live right for God. The third kind of Christian man is someone who is practicing celibacy until marriage currently. He's made a commitment to God. He wants to be celibate till marriage. And the next woman he dates, he's looking for his wife, looking for his good thing. And he's ready to have a relationship that can get serious and lead to seriously dating and he's willing to commit to God and the woman that the goal is not to be physical but the goal is to please God in the relationship and to be celibate until marriage so those are the three types of Christian men in dating now as you know woman of God you come across all different kinds of Christian men and the first kind you definitely want to steer away from because he could cause you to slip and fall in your own walk with Christ because he's not fully committed. He's not sold out. This is the one that for them, Christianity, Christianity is just like a trend. It's just a cool thing to say. It has no bearing on his life. You wouldn't even know if he was a Christian if you looked in his life, you couldn't even tell. So the word of God talks about in Amos 3.3, 3, how can two people walk together except they be in agreement? 
So, woman of God, if you decide to date someone like Christian man number one, then there is some agreement that you have there with him. And because of that, like the word says, the blind leading the blind, you may fall into a ditch. He's not someone that's going to cause you to grow in your relationship with God. He may be someone that influences you to pull away from God. He may be someone who complains about everything from the church or anything that has to do with religion. He's only saying he's Christian out of convenience. So you want to steer away from that type. I mean, once you find out, I always say, before you give someone your phone number, before you exchange digits, number one, you find out, if they're Christian, just ask them outright. They may say yes. So then when you have the conversation with him, that's when you find out which type of Christian man he is. So if you find out that he's number one, where it's just a title, you don't want to date that kind of man. Because remember, ultimately, whoever you date and decide to marry as a Christian man, he's going to be the one that God expects you to respect and admire to the point that he's the head of the household so you don't want to respect and admire someone who's not led by god because he's going to lead your family places where god never intended for you to go and it may not be good at all and not only that it could lead to broken hearts if they don't have a firm foundation of morals and values he'll be cheating all the time and wouldn't care lying all the time without a conscience because he's that type one Christian man. Now, type two. Now, type two or the second kind of Christian man is a little more tricky because he is a Christian. He loves God and he has a heart to serve God, but he just keeps falling and being tempted and giving in to that temptation. Now, you can work with type two or the second Christian man, but you just have to be firm in your stance, woman of God, and stand your ground and let him know your expectation. You have to let him know that you are celibate until marriage. Now, if he is that second kind of Christian man, he will respect that. And if he thinks you're worth it, he will honor that and be willing to wait with you. Now, if he doesn't or if he doesn't, um, if he's not willing to wait with you, it's okay to let him go because he may not be fully persuaded in his heart that this is the route he wants to take. He may be straddling the fence. But that's okay, woman of God, because the man of God who God has for you will be willing to wait for you. So finding out which type of Christian man he is, is a way to kind of weed out those that you don't want to deal with anyway. But like I said, you can still work with the second type because once you let them know your expectation and your standard as a woman of God, that you are celibate till marriage, then the right one will honor your decision and he will be willing to wait with you. That way you can focus on getting to know each other and enjoying spending time with each other. You can still um, enjoy each other's company without having the presence of sex. And guess what? When you have a relationship and there's no sex... The only thing that's left that you have is communication and also you have a better opportunity to connect more on an emotional level than just physical. Because we know that for a lot of men, sex is just physical and the presence of sex in a relationship does not mean there's love in a relationship. So when you have a dating relationship without sex, then it's almost like you're forced to communicate, you're forced to uh, spend time with each other, be there for each other more on an emotional level than a physical level. And that alone can cause your connection to be even stronger. So that second kind of Christian man, like I said, 
you may can date him he would just have to be willing to wait with your weight which will in essence help him because if he sincerely and truly wants to increase his relationship with god then you're the right woman in his life because you will help him do that as he encourages you in your walk as well so that's the second kind now the third kind is the kind that is sold off for of christ they love jesus they're church goer or even if they don't go to church every week they have god in their heart and they pray and they spend time with the father and prayer and meditation they seek out how to be a better man and they are looking for their good thing because that's another thing if you are dating if you are looking to date for the purpose of marriage and not just to be out here hooking up hanging out and all these other terms they use but if you're looking to date for the purpose of getting married then the main thing is you want to make sure you're dating someone who is marriage minded so a Christian man who is marriage minded, he's not out here just looking for a hookup. He's looking for something serious. He's looking for something real. And the third kind or third type of Christian man, he's looking to be celibate till marriage because he realizes that he wants his life to honor God in all aspects. Not just on Sunday, not just in front of certain people, and not just in certain situations, but in all aspects. He is totally sold out to God. He surrendered his life to Christ, and he is in search of his good thing. According to Proverbs, talks about he that findeth a wife findeth a good thing. He's not looking for a girlfriend because that scripture says he that findeth a wife. It doesn't even say he that findeth a girlfriend. And another point is, woman of God, this is the perfect season while single to become a wife first because you want to you want your husband to recognize you as a wife and not see you as a girlfriend because girlfriends are temporary. A wife is forever. So a type three man of God is not looking for a temporary thrill. He's looking for his wife. He's looking for his rib. He's looking for his good thing. Now, if you come across somebody like that, he's going to be upfront with you. He's going to be direct with you. He's going to let you know his intentions. And he's going to be willing to be celibate with you because he's celibate himself. That's what you definitely want to say yes to. Now, do you know right away whether or not all these three types, what type of man they are from like jump? No. You may... Find out over time as you communicate. Like I talk in my talk about in my book, How to Date and Stay Saved, dating is the purpose of dating is collecting data. So that's how you find out as you communicate. Uh, some of the things that you can ask even on a first date is, hmm, what do you like to do on the weekends? You can ask that over the phone. What do you like to do on the weekends? So when you ask that question, you want to make sure you ask open-ended questions to give them a time, I mean, a, a chance to kind of explain and, you know, share some things. That question peeks into lifestyle. And not only do you want to hear his answers, you want to observe his lifestyle. You know, when you guys communicate, you know, what you doing? What you getting into? Hey, what you doing? That peeks into which kind of Christian man he is. Now, you know, if he pressures you to have sex, um, he's not the one for you. Because any man, if he's pursuing you, if he really likes you, and if he's really into you, and if he wants to be serious with you, then he will respect your standard. And if your standard is no sex until marriage, he will respect and honor that and continue to get to know you but we know that first kind of christian man he's not going to respect that he's going to be on to the next he's gonna you know but you know what that's okay and we as women of god have to be at a place in our lives where we're okay with rejection because guess what man's rejection is really god's redirection and we have to be willing to receive and embrace when man says no. Because when man says no, it just means that man wasn't it. Who God has for you is for you. 
and the right one is worth the wait as far as and not only that he'll be willing to wait with you so let that first kind of christian man go he gotta work out the word says work out your salvation with fear and trembling that's what he got to work on. He got to work on his own relationship with God. No missionary dating where you trying to, you know, save him in the date and, you know, trying to convert him, trying to change his mind because his worldly ways are going to get away. I mean, get ahead of his any desire he may have to kind of even want to try to be right. Now, remember that first kind of Christian man, his heart really isn't in it. He's just saying he's Christian just because he's telling you what you want to hear. So that's why it's so important to not just go by what he says, but also observe his actions and his lifestyle. Now, like I said, again, that second kind of Christian man, um, he, he'll he be willing to work with you. He'll be willing to, willing to wait with you. Now, you want to also make sure with that second kind of Christian man that the relationship is equally beneficial, that you're both growing together in the Lord and that you're not carrying him. You know, that he's not looking to you to be his savior. Because again, ultimately you want the man of God to, um, he will ultimately be the main person. You know, like I'll, I'll give an example. Love for men is respect. Whereas love for women could be more like feeling. So, you want to date someone you respect. And a lot of times, if the man is looking up to you or looking at you for answers and he's pulling on you all the time and it's not mutually beneficial, you're not iron sharpening iron, you're just kind of like pouring into him all the time, then you may get to a place where you no longer respect him and he's going to feel it. So you want to be honest about yourself as far as if you're dating the second kind of Christian man, if you have the patience, if you have the willingness to um, grow with him, but you have to make sure that he's willing to grow with you. Now, the great thing is a lot of men, once they make a decision, whether it's to live for God or pursue a woman, once they make that decision, they go hard. So men can grow at a fast pace even when it comes to Christianity. But you just want to make sure you're at least equally yoked, you know, and that he is actively pursuing God, you know, actively seeking his face, actively praying regularly, seeking his word. That second kind of Christian man, he'll be all right, but you just want to make sure that he's continuing to grow spiritually. Now, a challenge with the second kind of Christian man is he may want to be celibate and he may will it, he may be willing to be celibate with you, but he may be tempted so much that he'll be celibate with you, but then if the ex-girlfriend come calling or some other temptation catches his eye, he may sleep with someone else while claiming he's celibate with you. Unfortunately, I had this happened with a friend of mine where um, she married someone she thought, well, he said he would be celibate. She was already celibate for like 10 years. He said he wasn't celibate and he had never been celibate, but he was willing to be celibate with her. And then she found out um, that unfortunately after marriage, she found out that he wasn't celibate with, you know, he wasn't celibate while he said he was celibate. So that's something you want to look out for. You definitely want to pray for discernment. Don't ignore the signs. Don't ignore the Holy Ghost red flags. Don't ignore the obvious. Because sometimes in relationships, we're so blinded by love. We're so happy to be in love or find somebody who remotely say that Jesus is Lord and his life kind of looks like it's right, you know, or at least he's trying. And, and you don't want to be blinded to the point where you miss things that God is showing you about the person. Um, you definitely want to be led by God and trust your instinct, which I believe, and your intuition, because I believe that God put in us as women intuition for us to know things and don't ignore it, follow through on it, and just look, if you do discover something, just look at it as a sign from God as a way of protecting you from pain, future pain, 
Um, Because that's why he shows us things. Because he loves us so much as his daughters that he wants to protect us. And sometimes protecting us looks like hurting us, but really it's preserving us. So that's a caution with the second kind of Christian man. But ultimately, I don't want you to, you know, be in a relationship with someone like that and like look for him to mess up or expect him to mess up because we're all a work in progress. Nobody's perfect. The main thing is if he has a heart for God and you can see the fruit on his life that he is really pursuing after the things of the Lord and he's willing to grow with you as you grow together, then that second kind of Christian man, he'll be good. And we know the third kind of Christian man, ideal, that's the ideal man where he sold out for God, he's living for God, he's already celibate, so the standard's already set for him. And if he approaches you and, and as you get to know him, you have an opportunity together to grow in your relationship and be great together in Christ. So, and be an example to other believers how it is possible to meet, date, and marry without having sex until after marriage and you know i talk about that more in my book how to date and stay saved on amazon so i'm excited that i was able to share this word with you i would love to read your comments like i said this is kicking it with kim brooks so let's kick it leave comments below have you experienced any of the types of Christian men? What was your experience? What are your thoughts about what was shared? I look forward to reading your comments and interacting with you. This is Kim Brooks, and as I always say, be and stay encouraged.